Counting calories can cause crazy anxiety, but don't trip in your healthy living segment. Personal trainer Eric Stratman from CrossFit ENG in Cape Coral has you covered, getting us more on the amount of calories you need and how to maintain your weight. Hi, Eric. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Thank you. How are you doing this morning? Good, good. Doing well. How about you? I see you're already up and getting ready to work out there. Yeah, we got we got them going here early. We we don't mess around, you know. Uh, we're making it a priority here. Oh, that's awesome. So, question for you: What percentage of your nutrition versus yes. exercise impacts our health? That is a amazing question because a lot of us, you know, we see the gym. We we understand that this is a big part of of being healthy, and and exercise is really what we want to focus. But really, nutrition is 70% of our health journey. So it's really what you're putting in because, you know, the, 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 the visual we give our clients here is when they're coming in that they spend an hour in here, they do a lot of work, or maybe it's a half an hour, and then they leave, they got 23 hours outside of this building to help or hurt their chances. So when you realize that as much water as you're drinking, the food you're putting in, the snacks you're having, the coffee, what are you adding to that? So that's so important for, for viewers to understand that 70% of their health journey is nutrition and what they're putting into their bodies. That makes perfect sense. And I obviously drink a lot of coffee. So maybe a question for you then is based off of what you were just talking about. How many <laughs> calories should we have a day? That, you know, this is, this is one of those calculations people aren't quite sure of and and too often we see that people get into too much of a deficit because they say, OK, well, I want to you know, change my body fat or my weight or my health. And they want to get into a, a format of calories that is absolutely too low. And we always use what we call the uh, we start off with the 10 multiplier. So when you look at your body weight and you multiply 10 to your the body weight you're trying to achieve, so let's say I'm looking at. Uh, I want to say 200 pounds. So that's going to be 2000 calories a day. Now this is a minimum for uh, just maintaining that weight. If you're very active, you're going to have a different multiplier, maybe uh, 12 or 14, depending on how much you work out. But really that number 10 is that perfect number to, to maintain. Cause we've talked about in previous segments about tracking your nutrition. Now, if you're tracking it and you realize how many calories you're eating, now you're in total control of achieving that weight that you want by just multiplying by 10. Well, I'm definitely going to use that information going forward. But so, what are some small changes that people can make now that will actually make a big difference? So those small changes are going to be, you know, really paying attention as we, as we let off this segment with 70% of, you know, our health journey is our nutrition. So if we look at saying, okay, well, I'm gonna start putting in more whole foods. So if you have one ingredient food, so eating an apple, having rice, having a piece of chicken, those are one ingredient. Something that's processed in a box or a can or fast food is definitely not a whole food choice. The other side of it is, is you know, what you're eating. So if you're just upping your fiber intake, having a small change, we always talk about changing 1% at a time so you can see those small changes actually build up to something in the future. So concentrating on your fiber intake and maybe slowly lowering your sugar intake. Because just like you, I'm an avid coffee drinker and the coffee's not really the problem as long as we're hydrating and not dumping a ton of sugar and cream in it. So that's really uh, the key to success and just staying consistent and getting 1% better each day. Dang, well, looks like I'm going to have to make a few changes myself. Eric, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. Counting calories can cause crazy anxiety, but don't trip our healthy living segment. Personal trainer Eric Stratman from CrossFit ENG in Cape Coral has you covered. Getting us more on the amount of calories you need and how to maintain your weight. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good, good. So a question for you to kind of get us started off here. You know, what percent of our nutrition versus exercise impacts our overall health? Yes, great question. And, you know, that, that's something that we look at and is 
you know, at the top of our list here because it's important that viewers understand that 70% of the what they do for their health is actually nutrition. So if you are realizing that, hey, you know, exercise that big priority, you want to work out, but that's only 30% of the equation. If you're if you're realizing that uh, you're not seeing the results you want or you're not the level of health you want, it's all about that nutrition. I know that's not the fun the fun part of the health uh, uh, journey. It's more the exercise, but this stimulates you mentally to get you get you ready for the nutrition. So you, you really want to look at 70. Percent. I know in the last segment, we talked a little bit about your calories and how many you actually need for uh, for sustainability. And anybody that's on a weight loss journey, we're going to give them this basic, basic equation where it's 10 times your body weight is going to be the minimum calories. And we talk about minimum because too often we see that people are putting themselves in too much of a calorie deficit when they're in a weight loss journey. And what actually happens is it down regulates your metabolism. So you do not end up losing any weight, sometimes even gaining weight. So people are feeling like, oh, my diet's not working. And that is really a four letter word to us. We don't like to ever look at diet. It's really just how many calories you're taking in each day and you're able to come through and and, uh, really realize that you're, uh, you're up in your activity that's going to be a little bit higher multiplier on your calories you're taking in. And then finally, we talked about a little bit of small changes with uh, eating whole foods and your fiber and your sugar intake. And uh, uh, one of those uh, major factors is what are we adding to our coffee? What are we, sna- you know, what are the snacks that we're focusing on? And then finally, that TV, you know, that's where we're seeing that most of our athletes are consuming the extra calories just sitting in front of the TV. So trying to eat at the table when you eat and being in front of the TV and just having your water there, I know it's a change or maybe that black coffee, but that's really the important factors to know, you know, how you can set yourself up for success because we always talk about what we say is the five P's and it's proper planning prevents poor performance. So you plan your days out, you understand the amount of calories you need, you have no doubt you're going to see the success you're looking for. I'm definitely going to keep that in mind. And I guess the last question I have for you, because that was great information all around. But, you know, making these small changes obviously can be easy. But, you know, for some, it may take a little longer to adjust. How do you, what are some tips for people and how to adjust to these small changes that they're making in their lives? That, that is a great question. We emphasize that 1% change, not try to change 100% because then we see that they're setting themselves up for failure because if they feel something's just slightly off, then they fail, then they quit it altogether. So what is that 1% that you can change with whole foods, one ingredient foods? Are you, you, know, are you eating foods that are higher in fiber, which are going to be those one ingredient foods and how much sugar you're taking in? So I would say concentrate on one of those at one meal per day, not every single meal, not perfect seven days a week, but doing a little bit better at one meal, one whole food, one time a day, and then adding from there. Because once you start consuming foods like that, you realize you're a lot more satiated, you you feel a lot better, you're sleeping better, you have more energy, and you're maintaining the body fat percentage that is gonna benefit your health. Awesome, Eric, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great tips, I'm definitely gonna use some of those.